While mistakes plague the Orange in their first loss of the season, a 31 to 14 loss against Clemson. Hello, everybody. Welcome inside the JMA Wireless Dome. I'm Samantha Croston. That's Ashley Wenskowski. And I don't know, in some ways to you, didn't it feel like the Orange sort of beat themselves? It did, and that's something that Garrett Schrader said immediately after the game in the post-game press conference. It really was a little bit of sloppy play, something that you just can't have against a team like Clemson. Maybe you can get away with that against Army and the lesser opponents that Syracuse has faced in the early part of their schedule, but not against Clemson, and that showed today. Three turnovers for the Orange, all three of which led to a Clemson score and nine penalties. And I do want to get into more of the ins and outs of the game, but just because, again, Ashley was on the, shoot, the, the field shooting today. I was in the press box. First of all, I do want to shout out all the fans who came here and did bring the noise. What did you see just from the student section and the fans? How did everybody feel? Well, I thought it was great. The dome was loud all the way through into the fourth quarter when the Orange looked like maybe they could mount a comeback when it was 24-14. They came within 10, but the fans really stayed here. They were loud and they were that 12th man. Dino Babers always says that the Orange need their 12th man at home and they had it today. Absolutely. And just to kind of run it back for people based on what we saw. I mean, you mentioned it. This team was off to a slow start. You had the first drive, there was the interception, and then on the third drive, there was a fumble. I mean, this isn't the first time that we've seen Syracuse get off to a rocky start, and I think against a team like Clemson, that really matters. It does. I think it showed where the momentum was going right away in this game. If you remember in week four last week, Syracuse was actually down at halftime to Army before they came back to mount quite a sizable win there. There is something with this team, and I just don't know what it is that they do start off a little bit slower through the first mm -hmm. opening drives, and they really do seem to be a second half team. And I mean, you said it. There are some teams where you'll, you'll be able to kind of get away with that, but Clemson, it's just not going to happen. And there is one thing that I'm sure many of you are thinking about right now that has plagued this team in the past this year so far. It plagued the team last year against Clemson, and that's penalties. There were nine penalties today for 92 yards, and Syracuse has 40 penalties total through the first five games. I mean, it's among, among the highest in the nation, and it is making a difference. I think absolutely today it made a difference. We saw that Marlowe Wax penalty was a costly one on third down. It just felt like constantly in this game they were getting a third down overturn due to yellow flags flying. Absolutely. And listen, on the one hand, I know that there are going to be some people who thought maybe some of those flags shouldn't have been thrown. On the other hand, I think if you don't even put yourself in a position to have that situation where you are getting a PI call, that would be the best case scenario for everyone. Anyway, you can't look back. You can only look forward. So again, we talked a little bit about what happened defensively, offensively for this team. Garrett Schrader, definitely not his best performance that we've seen. If anything, I thought a big light that I do want to shine a light on was Dan Valari, the tight end. He had his first career touchdown today. I mean, what did you take away from that? Well, Garrett Schrader took a huge hit on the first drive of the game, a uh, helmet-to-helmet collision it looked like. That initially was called as a penalty on Clemson, but they did end up overturning it. And that was something that we were kind of wondering if that was affecting him the rest of the game because he didn't look like a typical Garrett Schrader out right. there. He did say in the post-game press conference that that was not, that he was fine throughout the rest of the game, but he was silenced on the ground, as was LaQuint Allen. And those two are really the two driving components behind the Syracuse offense. They led the nation with 12 rushing touchdowns between them going into this game. So when you get nothing from, not nothing, of course, but when you get nothing on the ground from either of them, that's going to hurt. We talk about this a lot, and I'm going to quote one of Tommy Sladek's lines when he said that every team has a floor and a ceiling. Yeah. And I really feel like something that's going to determine that. Is this going to be a 7-5 and five team or a 9-3 and three team? I know that we made our predictions in the beginning. Is injuries and how everybody is keeping up, how sustainable is everybody. So that's something that we'll have to kind of continue to look for as things progress here. But I also know that you were in the press conference with Dino Babers, and I just want to know what you thought he kind of took away from today. Um, well, you know, I think he took away that he did say this is a team that has some young players. You know, even yeah. though you have Schrader under center and he's super experienced, it's a young team. A lot of these guys have never played an opponent of Clemson's caliber before, let alone Clemson. So he said that that may have affected them today. He said that he did think some guys were nervous and, you know, he said in the words that they didn't really, they weren't prepared to play on this stage, maybe. And I know what you mean. Like, even though it was a home game, which you think would make people more comfortable, 
It just felt like we didn't get Syracuse's best today. But the problem is, it doesn't get any easier from here. There's a lot of tough games coming up. It does not get any easier. They, we don't see them back at home again until November 3rd against Boston Unreal. College. They're on the road the entire month of October. And those first two opponents, number 15 UNC and then number five Florida State. I mean, if you thought today was hard for them, <laughs> it's not getting any easier. Oh, man. So we'll see about all of that. But again, today, 31 to 14, the final. And although Syracuse does move to four and one on the season, Clemson Tigers, man, they have Syracuse's number. In the ACC, Syracuse moves to one and 10 all time against Clemson. So this is a team they just have not been able to figure out, at least in the past few years. Um, thank you again so much for joining us. And the last thing I'd like to say is just please like and subscribe to our new YouTube channel. We also have TikTok. We have Instagram. We're all over the place we these are. days, quite honestly. So just keep in touch with our content. Samantha Croston, Ashley Wenskowski. We'll see you back here next time.